This is a Global Original Podcast. Oh, it's a good one this week. It was January 2020, and I was going off on one about the royal family. We still hadn't quite left the evil socialist superstate, and already things were not going well. This guy is sick. There's something wrong with this guy. Robert says uh, Buckingham Palace attracts 15 million tur- tourists a year. Versailles attracts only 10 million tourists a year. Why do you keep spouting fake news? That is total rubbish, Robert. Nonsense. <laughs> He's just making it up. NK says, so happy for them. Money and wealth will never give me happiness. I would rather have my hubby with me today than money. Harry is a real man. <laughs> well, how about you have money and your hubby, NK? That would be better than having your hubby and being poor. A weird thing to say. Uh, Lee says, slagging off your own country again, mate. <laughs> Real patriot there. There's nothing wrong with our country, nothing at all. It is 100% perfect in every way. <laughs> that is the patriotic thing to say. <laughs> People are so sensitive. It's ridiculous. You cannot improve anything unless you realize, unless you admit that there is something wrong. Is this country practically perfect in every way? Uh, and if your answer is yes, then, then I can't help you. Uh, Scott says, "Have you heard the? Have you heard about the new TV show deal that Harry and Andrew have been offered to star in, Dukes of Hazards?" And uh, uh, Tracy says, on your recommendation, I've started watching The Sopranos. We're five episodes in. Uh, well, you've got a lot of um, uh, terrifying stuff to come. Absolutely. It's a, Just think of it as a comedy with um, ultra-violence. It is the best TV program that's ever been made. It's about 20 years old now. How come nobody's made anything that is even remotely close to it in the last 20 years? It's extraordinary, really. I'm watching the whole thing again as well. Coming to the end of um, series two. Forget about it. Uh, let's have a call in North Fleet. Tony. Good evening, Mr. Abbott. How are you? Good, thanks. Basically, I want to back you up because I listen to you every Friday and Saturday night. Your last two or three callers, they are deluded beyond belief because <laughs> what you <laughs> well, say, no, honestly, what you, what you, what, I listen to you. People are living too much in the past and they're living in fairyland. Yeah. And what they, the only thing, they, when you tell them the truth, they come back with anger. Yes. And they don't know what to say. They don't have any facts. They come back with anger and talk a load of rubbish. People you know, are permanently on the edge of being furious in this country. And, and, the, and the most furious, weirdly, yeah. are the ones that are, are, are saying, you lost, get over it. Those, those people. Exactly. The people that exactly. think that they've won appear exactly. to be the most angry of all of us. Exactly, because they, they, they don't have a you know a, a platform. They, they don't know where they're going. They're only fo- they're only uh, following, listening, and believing all the rubbish that they hear. But when when you turn and tell them the truth, that's how they come back at you with anger. Right. Okay. All and right. Say, in say, saying you're rude and this that the other. Yeah. Okay. Th- thanks for the support. Cheers, mate. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. If you challenge somebody's um, long-held beliefs, then often anger is the result. A, f- a furious reaction is to be expected. But if those long-held beliefs are uh, ridiculous, as this entire country d- d- doffing its cap to, uh, and calling a human being your majesty, I mean, just pause and think about that for a second. How ridiculous is that? Your Majesty. (laughs) What century are we living in? Uh, Carl says, um, I've never listened to your show before. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh. Here we go. Grip onto something firm. Um, But I am tonight because of Sir Steve Allen talking about you. And um, I'm loving it. Oh, well, I must be doing something wrong. Thanks a lot, Steve. I'm going to I'm going to call him Sir Steve from now on. I mean, if if if, if silly titles are being just thrown around to family members and friends and uh, people who um, keep stum and just uh, you know do their work for uh, thirty forty years, 
if they get a funny title and a badge, then I think we should all give ourselves uh, any kind of title we like. Why not? Let me think about mine. It's going to be a really long one, as befits my um, uh, my station. <laughs> Let's have... Uh, who's been waiting the longest? I'll be totally fair about this. Birmingham. Danny. Hello, me. Danny. Hello. Yes, Danny. Let me just say yeah, this. Wait. Hello. I've been yeah. wait Birmingham, I've been waiting to talk to you, Lee. Danny. Hello. Yes, Danny. Right, good. You know your manners towards this royal family? The manners? I think it, your manners towards the royal family. Yeah, my manners. I think it's disgraceful. Mm, it's, it's awful. Disgusting. The way yeah. you put them down. The yeah. way you put them down. Mm -hmm. Manners. It's disgraceful. Yeah, dreadful. You put oh, down our country. Fabulous. Awful. You put down our country. Yeah. Our backbone. The royal family are the <laughs> backbone of this country. <laughs> can you the explain, Danny? Danny, can you can you standing. explain that? Uh, the backbone to this country. What do you mean? They, look, you've always going to have a bus, darling. Whatever you think in life. What? You've got a bus. I've got a bus. They're top dogs. Accept it. I've got a bus. Are you saying I've got a bus? Bus, bus, B O double S, bus. Oh, boss. They're our boss. They're top dog. <laughs> They're top dog. Accept it. <laughs> top dog, accept it. Right. Well, what do you mean by backbone? I mean, I'm just asking. They're, to, right. They hold up the country. Playing with you now. Go on. They keep it. I know you're They're playing with They're holding up stuff. the country. How are they doing yeah, that? They hold up the country. How how they are they the doing? By what, by what method the are they holding up the country, Danny? They keep they keep it working. Dick. They what? They keep the ball rolling. They keep the keep ball, the ball rolling. rolling. Right. Well, and you, you're you're, do you're, is, uh, you're making a lot of sense, Danny. If that's any help. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been hitting the head a lot? I'm just asking. Are you taking any medication? Don't operate heavy machinery, Danny. <sighs> Peter says, I agree with you that this country wallows in the past too much and hangs on to an outdated monarchy in pretense. In pretense, we are still a great country when we can't get the here and now right, what with rough sleepers, food banks, etc. We need to realise this and actually come into the 21st century. Well, yeah, it would be a good idea. But we're still desperately clinging to the past. I bet. Does anybody want to actually bet money that um, Uncle Nigel's party in Parliament Square on the glorious moment of our exit from the evil socialist overlords? They'll be playing the 633 uh, Squadron of the Great Escape of the Dan Busters theme tune. I bet they do. <laughs> They'll all have a, a, a little a plastic Union Jack each. They'd be waving it in the air. I wonder if Anne Whittacombe's going to be there. <laughs> 0345 I'm sorry, that was disrespectful. I do apologise. I am very sorry that I screwed up. Totally screwed I mean, I am so sorry. You just don't know how sorry I am. I'm sorry. It'll be beautiful. Trying to be funny because I'm all out of laughs. Uh -huh. Alex says, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul are two of the best shows ever made. Better Call Saul was a really weird one. I was uh, surprised uh, uh, that they did it that way. No spoiler alerts, but the character Saul was in Breaking Bad as a, sort of a, sl a sleazy lawyer. And, uh, and they did this, the break off, the spin off series, Better Call Saul, after Breaking Bad finished. I can't think of another spin-off series where the character that they span off was different than in the the original show that they spun it off from. I mean, Frasier was the same character as he played in Cheers. Uh, I've just run out. But there were other there were other spin-offs, and uh, and they were all uh, kept the character because that's what people like, right? But Better Call Saul, we didn't see the um, the, the 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 character. Uh, that we liked in Breaking Bad for quite a few series. I think it was like four series in before he became that sleazy lawyer. It was um, it was very unusual. I mean, it was good, but it wasn't uh, as 
I would have expected. I'm surprised they allowed them to make it that way. Uh, Roger says, you seem to have a very negative attitude. <laughs> Only to things that are negative, Roger. Uh, unless we have to be positive about everything all the time. Oh. Everything's wonderful, Roger. Nothing need change. The world is perfect just the way it is. <laughs> and on that subject, Andy says, I'm surprised the country isn't under six foot of snow with the amount of snowflakes around this evening. Now, because um, it's impossible to tell tone, I don't know which type of snowflakes he's talking about. Because snowflake is usually an insult thrown around by right wingers uh, to um, the to people on the left who get upset when they're uh, when they um, feel either uh, offended themselves or are taking offence on behalf of somebody else. You know, you can't take criticism. You're a snowflake. That sort of thing. But um, I think it's um, not really the people on the left that are guilty of being a snowflake, if that's the definition. Because the, the furious, unhinged reaction is usually from right-wingers, in my experience. Those are the ones that are on the edge of, uh, on the edge of um, permanent uh, anger all the time. Which, like I said, is odd. You know, if I talk about um, Brexit and the European Union and so on, the most furiously angry people are the ones that have, in inverted commas, won. They go berserk. And the uh, and the people who they say, you lost, get over it, they seem to be, you know, perfectly calm and resigned to it. They, they're not angry at all. It's the ones that have won who seem to be the, the, uh, the maddest, not insane, as in, you know, furious. I'll just add it to the pile of curiosities that we've experienced over the last uh, three years. Uh, Peter says, I agree this country wallows in the past too much and hangs on to an outdated monarch. Oh, no, I've read that. Um, it's not going to get better if I read it again. Adam says, the UK is a mean-spirited country full of thugs <laughs> who are pillars of the community, sycophants and kangaroo courts. OK. Well, there are plenty of thugs, yeah. How's that um, uh, kicking racism out of football going? <laughs> oh, fabulous. Uh, and Grant says, you're like the M&M of talk shows. But I have no idea what that means. Yo, yo, yo. Maidstone, Joan. Hello there. Hello there. I, I think this is great news, and I'll tell you for why. Both Harry and Meghan have promised to carry on with their charity work which I feel is far, far better than him having to suffer watching his grandmother putting the sword on the shoulders of people like Ian Duncan Smith. Hmm. So now all we've got to do is get rid of Andrew. Let him go toddle somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> gradually, gradually does it, you see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's great. Seriously, I think it's great. I'd far sooner them help the heroes and her do the thing about the women's rights, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Great. Okay, then. Yeah, they're, absolutely. They can carry on uh, doing uh, all of that stuff, you know, as long as yeah. the money goes to the right place. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't get hoovered up in expenses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing a great job. Oh, well, I'm doing a job. Let's just leave it at that. Thanks a lot, Joan. Okay. Ta-da. 0345-6060-973. Adam says, I'm sat here in a bath with a bucket of chicken wings, munching away in disbelief at the callers tonight. They're all mad. Why are they all so angry when they have their way? They're like the sort of kids who get presents for Christmas and then look for the price in the catalogue. <laughs> Well, I think that's a summation of what I just said, that the most furiously angry people that call uh, me on a regular basis are those who, quotes, have won. Who just want to ring in and say, um, you lost, get over it. <laughs> Why are you so angry if you've won? I suspect it's because uh, as far as Brexit uh, is concerned, they're big, they're, I think the, the, the dawning realisation is that perhaps they've been had that this uh, future of uh, glorious, sunny uplands is maybe not going to appear anytime soon. Speaking of which, uh, Sajid Javid came onto the scene this week. Oh, no. Yeah. The last thing we bloomin' well need. Businesses have predicted price rises. 
after the UK Chancellor Sajid Javid stuck his oar in. He said there was going to be no alignment with EU regulations once Britain frees itself from the evil socialist superstate. Javid says the Treasury would not lend support to manufacturers that favour EU rules, as the sector had had three years to prepare for Britain's transition. <laughs> yeah, three years of certainty. What are you talking about? Nobody had any idea what was going to happen in the next five minutes for three years in a row. Three years to prepare for Britain's transition. No, we didn't. We still don't. They still don't know how to prepare for Britain's transition. We still don't know what it's going to look like in a year's time. Plus, the government only lends support to billionaires who own airlines. There's that. When it's gifting money to the rich, that's good governance. When it's helping those in need, that's called socialism. No! Chancellor Supersage said there will not be alignment. We will not be a rule taker. <laughs> what a sense of humour. What he means is that we won't be a rule maker as an equal with, a, with the stable people that run Europe. We will instead be sat at that unhinged fat ball of fury, Donald Trump's feet, with a mournful look on our face, hoping for a tidbit from his table, which will not arrive. Donald Trump is not a nice person. So the Sanch man's remarks will be seen as a departure from Theresa May's... Day. You remember uh, Theresa May, don't you? We're still not missing you, Mrs M. <laughs> but kick off your comedy clown shoes. Put your feet up. Relax, you deserve it. <laughs> you should get some trainers or something. You can't walk in those shoes. They make you look clumsy. Err. Anyway, uh, uh, Mrs. M's deal is uh, out the window and the Sag man's remarks will be seen as a departure from her deal in which she envisaged close alignment with the EU in an effort to reduce friction at borders uh, for uh, traders, which was what they call sensible. Sensible. But Donnie doesn't do sensible and we're living in his world now. And, of course, placating Donny means that our own businesses are going to freak out, but that's the price we pay to be the offshore wing of the Trump party. We're not even the 51st state of America because that comes with uh, a certain degree of power. We're just, we just will be blown around in the wind by the strength of his fury and do whatever he tells us. It's happened already. It's already happened. We're falling in line behind him on Iran. A country that we said over and over again, they're sticking to the deal. They're sticking to the deal. And now that uh, Donald Trump threatened to ruin our economy, which he did just last week, we're saying, oh, yeah, whatever Donald uh, Trump just said. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go to war. Sure, why not? I'll bring us into war. Yeah. <laughs> but at least we'll be in control. <laughs> We'll be free to do what he says. As a foretaste of things to come, once we are not rule takers anymore, is that Donald Trump actually threatened to ruin our car manufacturing industry by putting on 25% tariffs on exports to the US if we didn't do what he said on Iran. So we did. Immediately. Didn't even think about it. We just said, yes, sir. We cravenly capitulated to blackmail from a man that is being tried in America for blackmail. You couldn't make it up. We're taking a rules from ancient orange already and we're not even out of the EU yet. But at least he's a man with a good temperament. But I have a strong temperament and it's a very good temperament and it's a very in control temperament. I have a very strong temperament, but I have a temperament that's totally under control. We're doomed. Dude! Tamily tweets, I'd rather pay the amount I do in taxes to the royal family every year than I do in TV licensing. For the 98% of utter tripe that's on the BBC, I'd also prefer to see the royals than the Towie, Gemma Collins and Love Island types that we are forced, that we are forced down our throats. <laughs> okay. All right. Duly noted, Tamily. 
Uh, Lucas says, I think you are overestimating how Henry and Meghan will perform in America. Overestimating? Fox News won't be nice to them there. I have a feeling the Republicans will hate them, says Lucas. I bet Fox News are not unpleasant. I bet they're interested, but not too much. Americans will just treat them like celebrities. I mean, we're in, we're in a, a world of celebrity. Andy Warhol's um, uh, old uh, uh, missive about uh, everybody getting the fame for 15 minutes has is, is come true, but it's, it's way more than that. You can get fame as long as you keep taking pictures of your face and your butt and you put them on the internet. I was reading about some, uh, they call them uh, influencers. <laughs> All you've got to do is get 5,000 people on the internet to um, follow your, uh, uh, to like pictures of your face and you can go and um, order free food in a restaurant or go and stay in a, in a hotel for free or get free uh, flights and all of that other nonsense. For why? There was some guy who's um, racked up billions of views of his uh, videos and they're just about him playing games. <laughs> I'm very disappointed with the kids today. I mean, it used to be that they went outside and played football. And then they stayed inside and played football on TV. But that was too exhausting. So now they just watch other people play video games on TV in their houses. And that's a thing, apparently. So uh, Hazard and Sparkles will be just fine because they'll be celebrities wherever they go. They'll just be, uh, the, the, you know, like um, the Kardashians, but with uh, a bit more class. A bit. A bit more. Not a lot, but a bit more. Uh, let's have Emma Lempstead. Steve. Mm -hmm. Wow. Can you back off the phone a couple of feet? Yeah. Hey, what about uh, sales of the unelected? Is that a no, then? Hello? Yes, yeah, can you um, uh, uh, hold the phone uh, a little further away from your mouth, Steve? Okay. What about the toes is that, is of that the an, unelected? Is, is that a no? They cut them in dash, don't they, Steve? Um, Nick, they cut them in dash in them brown overcoat cigarette, don't they? Um, I have no idea what you just said. What did you just say? I said they cut them in dash in them brown overcoats. Do you wish you had one like that? With a baldy head. Right, I've, st I've still got no idea what you're saying. What are you saying? Um, uh, I said they cut a mean ass with them big brown overcoats on with a baldy head, yeah? Right. Uh, can you hold on one there? Uh, just one second, Steve. Do you have any <laughs> idea what... What's he saying? <laughs> what's he saying? <laughs> I've tried like three times. I've got no idea what I'm he's sorry. saying. It's something no about idea. an overcoat. No. Have, have you lost your overcoat, Actually, Steve? Actually, we've got that bit in. Steve, did you leave your overcoat in a bus, maybe? No, 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 no. I don't have an overcoat. Oh. They've they, they spent all their money on overcoats. Um, people like me don't get one. Oh. Especially a big brown one that I have with a baldy head. Sticking through the top, eh? They're princes. Yeah, okay. These tales well, of the unelected. Right, well... Uh, what do they do? <laughs> Leave that with me. And um, I'll have a full report on your desk first thing in the morning. How does that sound? I have no idea. But it fits right in. <laughs> Dave... Dave says, usual bunch of lefty, disloyal, anti-Brexit, anti-monarchist, anti-Tory, anti-Trump snowflakes, bitterly dissing anyone that isn't of the holier-than-thou Remainer Labour voting self-righteous brigade. Yeah, everything I just said about um, the, the furious right has just been uh, proven. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for underlining my point for me. <laughs> I'll I'll recap that message. <laughs> yeah, that was it in a nutshell. Heard something you didn't like, went berserk. <laughs> Adam uh, asks, never mind Hazard and uh, oh, never mind Hazard and Sparkles. When are we going to get an update on that lost hitchhiking Welsh horse mentioned yesterday? What was that? Um, Zora mentioned it in her news bulletin that a horse got on a bus. Oh, or something. Right, but that's not hitchhiking. Is it not? No, that's that's using public transport. But if you're a horse, surely that's hitchhiking. Well, maybe, yeah. Uh, how did it pay? 
<laughs> I don't have a pun for that. Huh, did it use cash or, or what? Or card? Curious minds are keen to find out. We should ask that last bloke. Maybe he was on the same bus. 0345 Let's have um, Leatherhead. Tim. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? Good, thanks. <laughs> Sajid Javid. Yeah. If you if you do, um if you go on his on his website sajidjavid dot com, you'll scroll down and you'll find um, still on there, believe it or not, from the fourteenth of May, twenty sixteen, a little article by Sajid Javid. And the headline is: "The only thing leaving the EU guarantees is a lost decade for British <laughs> business." <laughs> yes. That's still on his website. It's still on his website. Oh, Sag. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to yourself? Yeah, you should wipe all that. Make make sure that you can't access that. Make it, um, uh, you know, that, uh, what do they call it, when you can't access something on Google? Oh, God, no. Yeah, they've, they've wiped the slate clean. Yeah, Saji Javid used to be, not too distantly long ago, very, very four remaining in the European Union. You and now be. he's had um, he's uh, had a revelation. Um, Nick, thirty first of January yeah. in Parliament Square. Mm. I, I hope we're going to have um, some Vera Lynn classics. And, oh, um, I forgot they, about that. The Andrews, Vera the Lynn, Andrews Andrews yeah. Sisters, Andrew Sisters. Mm-hmm. The Boogie Woogie Boogle Boy of Company, Company B. Company B, yeah. That's an yeah. Americanism, though, isn't it? Boogie Woogie Boogle Boy of Company B. Well, it may be, but I thought maybe the company B was something to do with Brexit. I don't know. <laughs> they, they can rewrite the lyrics, it. yeah. Well, the list I've got so far, the uh, because um, Nigel Farage is having a party in Parliament Square <laughs> to celebrate our glorious exit from their evil European overlords. <laughs> and there's going to be music. Not that kind of music. <laughs> It'll be The Great Escape. It'll be the Dam Busters theme. It'll be 6633 Squadron, Land of Hope and Glory, and, of course, God Save the Queen. Don't forget about that. And a bit of, um, there'll be uh, bluebirds over the White Cliffs of Dover, whatever colour they were, to celebrate our glorious freedom. Yeah, I can't wait. Won't that be marvellous? I want to send a Niger mixtape. <laughs> right, thanks a lot, Tim. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Yeah, so Saji Javid is saying that um, there will be no alignment with EU regulations once Britain leaves uh, our um, our neighbours. And he said that with his feet planted so far apart, he looked like he was straddling a railway line. Zora Solomon says, our newsreader says that, that horse on the bus paid with his stable income. <gasps> Oh, no, a, n- a newsreader with material. Oh, no. And that's it. If you subscribe to this podcast, the next episode will get squirted up your life, mostly on Mondays. Mostly. There's also the other podcast that I do. There's the one with Carol McGiffin, which is called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? In which Carol McGiffin and I try to solve people's problems while maintaining a straight face and having... Mild success on both counts. If you would like us to have a bash at your issue, simply send it to the following address, Nick and Carol at global.com. That's N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com. And prepare for total satisfaction. The name of the podcast, What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? Uh, there's also the Friday and Saturday shows that I do on the radio. They get squirted up the internet Uh, As a podcast, we take the news and the ads out, takes less time to listen to, you'll use less electricity, and we won't have to fire up a coal-powered station. And I'll be back on the radio, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, and until then, I'll be seeing you. Bye-bye.